Hello, everyone. This is Patrick from AppliChat Healthcare. Welcome to our latest AppliChat Healthcare podcast as part of our regular webinar series on nurse and healthcare recruitment topics and healthcare human resource matters generally. To watch our webinar videos and view the presentation notes, you can find the link to our YouTube page in the podcast notes. You can also find all of our free resources and learn how AppliChat Healthcare finds more qualified nurse applicants for our healthcare clients by visiting us at AppliChatHealthcare.com. A veteran re physician recruiter with over 20 years experience applying this trade. And I want to know from him some of the lesser spoken about topics around physician recruiting, what works, what doesn't work, some of the things people are maybe uncomfortable to speak about. So hello, Kevin. Hello, hello. You know, it's funny, um, uh, when we talked before about uh, the structure and, and what we're going to talk about, you know, the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, and this is this is going to be tough for recruiters to hear, is physicians recruit physicians, not recruiters, right? Mm -hmm. Recruiters help arrange physician conversations and relay the process and stuff like that. So if you don't have physicians engaged in your recruitment process, it's probably going to be a little bit harder to to uh, to be successful, right? So. Sorry, uh, recruiters are important. I love them. I've been one for a long time. Uh, but, you know, physicians recruit physicians. Um, why is that? Because at the end of the day, you know, it's like anything else. You mean, uh, they want to know what the role is like, right? They want to know what it's like to be a physician in your organization. And, uh, you know, someone with HR training that's uh, an expert in recruiting doesn't have that expertise. And, you know, when, uh, when, when an engineer recruits, they're is usually being recruited by another engineer, right? So it's, you know, it's peers recruiting each other. But in this case, when the expertise of the recruiter is that of the recruiting process, you know, sometimes it's it, it's more effective if you give them uh, an opportunity to talk to a physician so that the, the peers are talking, right? And not the not the uh, the person managing the process, right? Mm, okay. So, yes. It's like it's like anything else, right? Like you and I work together because we uh, we like each other and because we complement each other and because you know I, there's all kinds of things that I can learn from you and vice versa, right? So you know I'm not I'm not recruiting with uh, and working with AppleChat per se as I'm working with you know with Adam and Patrick and the rest of the team, right? Yeah. So if physicians recruit physicians in marketing positions, should employers be including more testimonials, um, case studies or examples of physicians that work there to make that yeah. the number one thing? I think, I think profiling physicians and the work that they do is definitely a, a major thing, right? So prime example is I was sitting out uh, with a, a recruitment committee for a community looking to recruit family docs. And, I, uh, you know, it's a small community kind of, you know, there's many like it and stuff like that. So it's, it's not a rarity, like they don't have the market cornered on work-life balance. However, one of the physicians that I was having uh, dinner with had recently just created a palliative care module for family physicians and, uh, uh, and, uh, and did a grant to get funding to implement this primary care, this uh, palliative care model. So that's neat. That's different. That's not being done everywhere. That's unique. So marketing that and marketing that creativity goes a long way to create an identity for that community. So I, you know, I, I begged her to do a podcast or to, to do a blog or get that information out there because if someone else is in another community, they may want to talk to her. And, yeah. you know, and, and we look at, um, when we look at the numbers and the metrics and stuff like that as part of the Apple Chats recruiting, you know, it takes a good bit of numbers to get to the true number, which is the engagement, right? Like, you know, we know that X number of hits uh, and, and uh, impressions is going to come down to, you know, one higher, right? And I think you have to really find ways to ensure that your message is engaging and then allows you to to get to that peer to peer discussion. Mm. Yeah, I think definitely there's some received wisdom that just simply doesn't work anymore. Um, it used to be you could post a job ad and you get applicants. Now you have to tell stories. 
and touch people's hearts a bit more and showing them other people doing that is certainly going to do it. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you're in most cases, we're asking people to move, right? Like a lot of physician recruitment require, unless you're in a big city where there's lots of systems and, and lots of hospitals within a similar commute to each other. In a lot of cases, you're saying, I, I want you to move from Texas to Oregon, right? Like, you know, we're talking to a physician in Texas about moving to Oregon. So, you know, it's a much bigger uh, ask and requires much greater engagement. So you have to give them the information to make the decision wholeheartedly that requires the action on their behalf, Yeah. right? Like our job is to give them the information so that they are engaged in the process and want to put the effort in to moving to that job or moving mm -hmm. to that hospital or moving to that city, right? Yeah. You, can't, you can't expect someone to look at a job ad and agree to uproot their entire family because of a job ad, right? You guys, yeah. Apple Chat does some great ones, but it's, you know, the goal is to get the initial reach out. Then you have to focus on the engagement that's going to get them to participate in the process. Otherwise, you know, you're just collecting resumes. Yeah. That's why we've changed some of our ads. They were initially saying, move to Texas for lower taxes. A better weather mm -hmm. uh, for example but that that was saying hey you person sitting in new york here's the reasons why you need to move to texas and mm -hmm. you're listing the reasons without that person technically already having the desire inside them yeah. uh we switched it up so i'd say do you want to be closer to your family in texas or you know is it is it a pain to travel with kids to get home to see the grandparents trying yeah. to get people that already have it in their mind to do it is something yeah. that we really want to try and yeah. well, you know, it, it, it's interesting like you know we find that it takes between three to five emails to get a physician engagement and how we target our emails is each email gives a little bit about the job a little bit about the community and a little bit about uh you know, the organization, right? Well, and then each subsequent email talks about something different. So you're hoping that by the time they see the third, fourth or fifth email, they've gotten enough information to be engaged, right? Instead of sending this massive, you know, uh, five paragraph email that they're not gonna read because they don't have the attention span for it, neither do we, uh, you send small snippets and each time impart a little bit of information so that the collective, by the time they send the third email, is like one of those things will something in one of those three emails, four emails, five emails will resonate with them. You can't send the same message five times because you might be excluding the thing that resonates with them, right? You 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 know you you mention uh, uh, I'm I'm working with a client in uh, in Winnipeg or, in, or well in Manitoba, right? I'm looking for people that have some tie to Manitoba because otherwise. You know, so if you grew up in Toronto, you're not moving to Manitoba, right? If you grew up in New York, you know, it's, I mean, you're, you're probably not moving to Oregon unless some life change happens, like your spouse gets a job mm -hmm. or something like that, right? There's usually got to be a reason for the move and a reason to change jobs. So you need to market and have those engagement enough to figure out what that reason is and then remove it. It's not about selling. It's about removing the barriers and the no's, right? Yeah. Figure out yeah. the, the five reasons that person doesn't want your job. And if you can remove those five, then you've got a chance. If you can't, then, you, you know, you move on. Yeah. But it's like, it's like some of my clients, I explained I explain to them, I said, you're, 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 there's nobody locally that you're going to recruit, right? So if you're only going to be able to recruit from somewhere else, you really need to put a focus on your relocation package, right? Because or you're going to have to pay more than everyone else because that person's not going to take a $20,000 relocation hit just to make the same money somewhere else. Yeah. So you have to look at what the physician wants and needs to make the move and understand if that's something you can, but also understanding that where your talent pool is coming from should dictate what you're offering. Mm -hmm. Right. Like one of my clients offers temporary housing. Right. Because at the end of the day, it's hard to find housing there. So they're like, you, you know, we have a we have a house. 
you can stay in the house for a year. And at the end of the year, if, you know, they'll hopefully have been ingratiated or sooner in the community and they found somewhere else. Right. Yeah. Removing the barriers to, to make the, the transition difficult is key in making the transition happen. Mm. I love that. That's, that's a very clippable comment. Um, nice. That's a good truth about physician recruiting. I'm going to recap before we go. Um, so physicians recruit physicians. And you need to remember that whenever you're not only marketing, but selling. And it's not so much selling, but it's it's showing them something that they already want or know and getting them to connect with an intention that's already there uh, rather than going in cold and getting someone to move to Alaska from New York. Um, do you want to add anything, Kevin, before we close off? Uh, you know, the other thing, too, I, I honestly think is strong content messaging and frequent and repetitive messaging. Right. Like, I mean, very rarely does somebody answer to the first email. So if you're not creating systems to understand that you're going to have to reach out to them numerous times, you mean, yeah. you're not you're not going to get them. Right. Yeah. And, you know, constant changing messages so that you finally find the one that resonates and small snippets. Not I mean, these these are immensely busy people with a lot of stressful things. You know, the last thing they want, they want to do when they look 